everyone, welcome back. Or if you're just joining, my name is Maya and welcome to my channel, Cranley Place, where I'm posting content on scarf style, knot tutorials, and more. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to be notified of new videos, which I'm publishing weekly. In this video, I'll walk you through my scarf selection, wardrobe planning, and packing for an upcoming business trip. I like to travel light, so I'll share my main tips for traveling with a single carry-on and personal item. Let's get started. First off, I start my planning by considering the trip type. In this case, it's a business trip, which automatically means a different daytime wardrobe than I'd take if I were planning for a vacation or even a mix of business and pleasure. Fortunately, business casual will do in this case, so I don't have to worry about anything formal. Regardless of the trip type, I prefer not to check luggage and instead pack relatively light in a carry-on and one personal item. Depending on where I'm going, especially if it's a crowded route or I'm worried about whether there will be enough overhead cabin space, sometimes that carry-on will be in a duffel that I can stuff under the seat in front of me along with my personal item. Next, I take a look at the likely weather conditions. Where I'm going will be hot and humid outside, but since I'll be indoors most of the time, I like to dress in layers. A lot of times in these conference settings, the AC will be on full force, so a scarf and light jacket definitely come in handy, and they're lightweight enough to peel off as needed. So, we know the trip type, business, and likely weather, hot and humid, but with inevitable forceful indoor AC. So next I start thinking about what scarves I want to wear. In this case, I'm looking mainly at Twillies, 45, 65, 70, or 90. Even the 90 centimeters may be pushing it, but given my destination, I'm definitely ruling out Giant Triangle or 140s. And since they're small, I could probably cheat and bring more, but I do try not to overpack, even when it comes to scarves. This trip is not actually that long. Monday and Friday are travel days. There's a dinner on Monday night, conference meetings Tuesday through Thursday, and then back home on Friday. So one key for me, as far as traveling light, is to plan my outfits to a T. This helps me avoid overpacking and bringing more than I really need or will wear. Travel days are pretty easy. I wear pretty much the same thing. T-shirt, pants, a jacket of some sort, and sneakers, plus a scarf. In this case, it'll be a 90. Usually something I can quickly remove at security checkpoints. There was a time when I didn't, and a female TSA agent poked around my neck and scarf to search it. And since their gloves have been touching God knows what, ever since then, I take off my scarves at the security checkpoints and put it in my bag for screening. Here's a look at my outbound travel day outfit. A pair of gray colored twill ankle pants. A navy tee, this one is by Burberry, it's a light cotton, super comfortable and dark in case I spill anything. My scarf will be Hermes on the beach, 90 centimeter that I just talked about in my last video. I have a jean jacket, this is my favorite jean jacket, well actually I guess it's my only jean jacket now. I got rid of the other ones in my closet since I never wore anything else after getting this one. Then for kicks, I usually wear my largest shoes for travel so they don't take up valuable luggage space. These ones are Adidas Superstars, which are not only super comfortable, but they're easy to slip on and off and easily take any of the dresses I'm planning to bring into a casual mode, which is nice. Then for the Monday night dinner, I do want to change mainly to freshen up after the flight. So I have a simple dress with a boat neck style neckline. This is a jersey knit which travels exceedingly well. You basically unpack, shake it out, and bye bye wrinkles. Love that. And then I'll change into some Oran sandals. Add a scarf and voila. In this case, I chose a spring green color 45 centimeter Jardin sur le Toit 
which, if I'm not mistaken, came from the men's silks, technically making it a pocket square. You never know what you might find in the men's collections, and for some reason, I am always attracted to this color. It'll be a perfect touch to the outfit. Nothing too over the top for what I know will be a relatively casual dress environment. I'll also bring my jean jacket in case it gets chilly. For a purse, I'll use a little pochette, which is big enough for keys, ID and credit card, lip balm, and a cell phone. This also slips easily into my personal item or briefcase when I'm traveling, and it's very handy for dinner outings such as this. By the way, the Orans will also double as my hotel room slippers, since I don't like going barefoot in hotel rooms. On Tuesday, I will be mostly indoors in an air-conditioned environment, so I planned another jersey knit dress. My clothes choices in general tend to be driven by the necklines that will show off a scarf, and in this case, it's a scoop neck that I'll pair with a twilly and one of my favorite knit jackets with three-quarter sleeves and a Peter Pan collar. This Twilly is a relatively new addition to my collection from the fall winter 2022 season. Some of you will no doubt recognize it as Sous le Charme d'Orphée by Alice Shirley. I plan to pair the outfit with these two-tone ballet flats by French Soul. I love the two-tone styling which looks like a certain interlocking double C flat but without the price tag. Price aside, honestly, I actually prefer the French soles ones because they have a flexible versus a rigid sole. And in fact, I have these in three different colors. I like them so much. Anyways, they're a perfect complement to the outfit and can be dressed up or down depending on the occasion. I've included a link below in the description if you're interested. On Wednesday, there's a group photo planned, so I will have to wear a company shirt, which happens to be a slate gray polo shirt. I'll pair it with this tulip cut black skirt. Essentially, I'm treating the outfit like a gray dress, which means I can wear just about any scarf with it. And for this, I've chosen another 45, Three Graces by Alice Shirley. I especially love this pale pink hem and these colors, the black, the cream, brown and pink will work quite well with gray and black outfit. For shoes, I'll wear the sandals and plan on keeping my jean jacket on hand to ward off the chill from the AC. Thursday is the last day of the conference and I've chosen a lime colored eyelet dress that I can pair with my black zip knit jacket. And for the scarf, I have this 65 centimeter cotton scarf from the men's collection. Depending on how my feet feel, I'll either wear the ballet flats or sandals. And if for whatever reason my feet are sore, I always have the Adidas Superstars. Should be okay enough for the ballet flats, but it's nice to have backups though. I'm sure you know how that goes. For my travel day back home, my outfit is pretty much a repeat of Monday, but with a different shirt and scarf. So I've got the gray color twill ankle pants, which have been airing out all week. This time I have a black tee. This also happens to be Burberry. The jean jacket, the Adidas Superstar for footwear, and scarves. It's always so hard to choose, but because I haven't yet worn it yet since I dip dyed it, I chose my DIY Dip Dye Le Clay by Cathy Latam. If you haven't yet seen my video on this, you should check that out. To tally it all up, what is going into my bags, specifically my carry-on and my personal item? We don't have to worry about the travel day outfit. That's the pants, t-shirt, jean jacket, scarf, and sneakers. So here's what I have to pack. There are three dresses, one skirt. I'm getting the company shirt there, so I'll have to pack that on the way home. A black knit jacket, two pairs of shoes, those are the ballet flats, plus the Oran sandals. The PJs, undies, socks, exercise clothes, toiletries, makeup, and a hairbrush. And that should be it for the carry-on. Then for my personal item, I've got a laptop, including its power cord. My miscellaneous bag. I got this years ago on a Lufthansa flight, and it's the perfect small size to carry my AirPods, 
charging cables, power banks, some ibuprofen, a couple of bandages, hand lotion, a nail file, and cuticle cream. I also have some sanitizing wipes, hand sanitizer, some N95 masks, and a facial spray for some in-flight moisture. And then I bring my noise canceling headphones also because it's a longer flight and I can't wear the AirPods for long periods of time. I also bring a collapsible water bottle and a small plastic bag for any trash. And of course, my pochette with ID, cards, money, keys, cell phone, etc. So this is essentially all that I have to bring with me. While I do sometimes use a duffel or backpack for my carry-on, I actually prefer a spinner of some sort so I can shove my laptop and its power cord in there as well. With the scarves, I usually put them in plastic Ziploc bags in case of any makeup or lotion mishaps in the luggage. Knock on wood, there haven't been any so far, but you never know. I also use packing cubes for everything else except for the toiletries and makeup, which have their own cases. If you're interested, I've also included a link to the type of packing cubes I use below in the description. For dirty laundry, hotels usually have those plastic dry cleaning bags, so I don't bring anything specific to keep dirty clothes separate. The zip locks are also handy for swimsuits, but I'm not bringing one on this trip since it's business. Shoes, I also double bag, so to speak, with the shoes in plastic bags than those going into the shoe bags. Might be overkill, but I don't like the idea of my shoes, which have been everywhere, contaminating everything else in the suitcase. So there you have it, my scarf selection, wardrobe planning, and how I pack for an upcoming week-long business trip. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and let me know what you think in the comments. In future episodes, I'll share other scarf reviews, not tutorials, and more, so be sure to hit that subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks again for joining me today. Until next time!